show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am That British Guy. Welcome back to the channel. At the beginning of the year, I did a quick five point list on the top five things that I think will happen in the world of professional wrestling this year. Here we are, pretty much six months on. Let's see how well I have predicted this year so far. First up, point number five. Chris Jericho is crowned the inaugural AEW champion. Well, we are very close to this potentially being a reality. I did say this could even potentially happen at Double or Nothing. Maybe we get a reveal of the belt, which we did in fact get. And this could lead to some kind of tournament or multi-man match to decide the first champion. However, what we did have was a multi-man match to decide one of the number one contenders. And we got Hangman Page as the winner of that. And the main event of Double or Nothing between Chris Jericho and his opponent, who we will talk about a little bit later in the video, decided the other number one contender. Chris Jericho obviously won that. So we will have Hangman Page versus Chris Jericho to crown the first AEW World Champion. And I think we're probably going to go with Chris Jericho based on this. I just feel out of the two names, because he's got that kind of more recognisable name, especially amongst more casual fans, especially with his links to the Attitude Era, the kind of most popular time within wrestling in living memory, I still feel they are going to go down the route of Chris Jericho as their inaugural champion. Moving on to my next point. Brock Lesnar will not feature at WrestleMania 35. Well, I definitely missed with this one, didn't I? Not only was he there, he was the champion going in and opened the show, pretty much. Granted, he lost it straight away, but he is still lurking around. Admittedly, this was purely based on the knowledge at the time that Brock Lesnar was facing off against Braun Strowman, and it was kind of to more protect Strowman, and McMahon thought the same thing, he couldn't keep having Strowman face Lesnar and lose, and that is why he swapped him out for Finn Balor, so that Lesnar could get a nice easy victory over Balor, and then take the belt into WrestleMania. He is, at time of recording, the Money in the Bank winner and briefcase holder. So the chances are he will become the Universal Champion again in the not too distant future. They want to elevate that briefcase back up to where it was. They don't want to keep having failed cash-ins like Braun Strowman last year and Baron Corbin the year before that. So it's likely that Brock Lesnar will actually successfully cash in his Money in the Bank contract. Needless to say, he was definitely part of WrestleMania 35. Moving on. NXT increases their global localization program. Well, at the start of the year, we did see NXT UK's first takeover show in Blackpool. As mentioned in my previous video, there were rumblings of people like Volta signing, and that might potentially lead into an NXT Germany or Europe brand. At the moment, himself and Ilya Dragunov and others have just kind of stayed within the UK banding. Whether that develops from there, we're not entirely sure. At time of recording, Volta is the WWE United Kingdom Champion. But we do have another UK takeover in Cardiff later in the year. So who knows what that will develop into throughout the year. Kushida has joined the NXT brand as well. So that would probably suggest that there's not going to be a big launch in Japan at the moment, at least. Otherwise, you would figure that he would be one of the kind of key focal points of that. And to be honest, news on this front has kind of died down recently. Maybe they are just kind of trying to focus as much attention on the NXT UK brand and get that 
properly up and running before branching out too much and biting off more than they can chew. Obviously with the emergence of AEW the main roster has kind of got to fend that off as well so maybe they're just trying to not spread themselves too thin for the moment. Next up the undisputed era to hold all the gold. So there were reports a little while ago that they were keen to bring Adam Cole to the main roster. However, this was not necessarily in line with bringing the entire undisputed era up. It was unclear. And these reports went out just after he had won the NXT title from Johnny Gargano. So... Hmm, not sure really. It seems that what they are setting up is potentially this kind of thing going forward within NXT. Obviously Adam Cole is now the NXT champion and he keeps going on about the Undisputed Era being draped in gold this year. Roderick Strong has been kind of positioning himself within the mid-card alongside the likes of Matt Riddle a returning Tyler Breeze and the Velveteen Dream within that North American bracket. So it's possible that he could be the next North American champion. And at the past NXT TakeOver, TakeOver 25, Fish and O'Reilly were unsuccessful in winning back the Tag Team Championships. But they could very well be the last piece in this puzzle. We could have Strong getting the North American title, keeping the tag belts on the Street Profits for a little while longer before Fish and O'Reilly pick them up again and then potentially drop them very, very quickly. But we still get that moment of all of the gold within the Undisputed Era. I still think it's likely to happen this year, but I do think it is now a lot more likely to happen on NXT as opposed to on Raw or SmackDown. And finally, Kenny Omega signs for All Elite Wrestling. Well, this was probably the most predictable thing that I put in the video. At the time it was released, there was still a lot of rumours that Omega was going to sign for WWE and appear at the Royal Rumble. And I just didn't see logistically how that was possible. I didn't see how that was likely for him as a person either, considering who was going to be involved with AEW. And not only did he sign for them, he was in the main event of their first show and nearly became a number one contender to their world title. And I think it is very likely that by the time the year finishes, he either will be or could have been the world champion at that point. So there we go. I'm not doing too badly with my predictions. Granted, one of them was completely blown out of the water. Thank you, Brock Lesnar. But one was 100% correct. And the others still look fairly likely, even if one has needed a slight adjustment regarding the Undisputed Era. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it wherever you can. Until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.